Yeah, so Just is a company of about 100, 120 people uh, based in San Francisco. And we have a simple mission. We want to make it easy for people to eat well. And that doesn't mean that it, you have to have an elaborate preparation. We think it means four things. One is it must taste great because all food must taste great. Second, it must be nutritious. Again, all food must be nutritious. Three, it should be affordable. And all food is not affordable. And so that's the goal we have for our company. It should be available in Whole Foods. It should be available in Walmart. It should be available in between every store. And that's uh, our mission. And then the fourth thing that comes along is our dream for sustainability. And we want to make all the food sustainable and good for the environment. So those are the simple things we do. And the, the way we've approached it is we have two major efforts. One is to find plant-based proteins that have some functionality. They're not just nutritious, but they also either emulsify foods or gel foods or solubilize foods. And then finally, we are venturing into the area of cultured meat, which is new area for the world. Um, we have now a product that is ready for market. Uh, we are just waiting on regulatory clearance, which in some countries we are almost within a month or two of getting. Yeah, I mean, um, if these products did not involve R&D, we'd already be eating them, right? So the, the trick is, how do you find these materials? So if you look at the plant kingdom, there's 400,000 plants in the world. How do you find the one that scrambles like an egg? Right? It, it requires research. And if you're screening 400,000 plants, it will take you several generations. We can't wait that long. So we have built a lab with robotic and instrumentation and machine learning capabilities so that we can do this faster. And as a result, we found the mung bean we found other materials that do other interesting things, and that is a big deal for us, and nobody else in the world has that capability. Now, what happens after you discover a bean? There's still development involved, right? So, and, and we found this the hard way, because scaling something up is a challenge in itself. You have to worry about supply chain, logistics, you know, supply, farmers, extraction, equipment, uh, product purity, quality, all those things are part of development. And we have out of 120 people, 52 of them are in R&D. Almost all of our funding was private funding. Um, I think it's no secret we have raised a, a few hundred million dollars. It takes money to do these things. Um, and. You know, it's very interesting that the food industry has wanted to do this. It's not as if they want to give you things that are, are, are bad for you, right? They want to give you good food, but they just have not had the R&D dollars to spend. And because of the uh, climate in California where venture capital uh, money is available, we are able to do these things. And this is very much parallel to the pharmaceutical industry. 20 years ago, I worked with pharmaceutical companies and they did all their research for drug discovery. Today, they do minimal research and a lot of the research happens at these young bio, uh, company, biotech companies in Silicon Valley who find the drug, spend hundreds of millions of dollars, either they succeed and find a drug and get acquired by a large pharmaceutical company or they fail. And the VCs recognize that out of 10 companies, maybe one or two are going to be successful. But the success, the level of success of those is going to be so high that nine failures are okay. Absolutely, because our products are um, made differently, we can fine tune the health benefits of it for different geographies for example, or for demographics. You know, maybe kids need a certain level of vitamin 
maybe uh, men need a certain kind of uh, additive, maybe women need a certain kind of additive, and we can customize all those. So those are all things that are in their future. Uh, we do, we do, right? I mean, um, we're not saying that this has to replace every egg in the, in the universe. There are people who, uh, for whom, you know, this is a staple diet for 100 years, they're not going to go away from this. So slowly, as they see the benefits uh, of egg, may, of our egg, maybe they will switch. Maybe they will switch half the time. All's good, right? And um, we recently did a survey in China. China, the per capita consumption of egg is the largest in the world because they eat eggs for dinner, they eat eggs for, you know, all sorts of things. And the survey highlighted the fact that 90% of the consumers would try this product and 50 or 60% said, we will try this because it's healthy, right? So our egg has zero cholesterol because it's not a, a, an animal-based product. Zero cholesterol, same amount of protein as a regular egg. Right? We are coming up with more and more different ways of serving it to you. Right now we have this bottle out of which a liquid comes out and you scramble. We now have a patty that we have made that's frozen and a QSR can just quickly thaw it and sell a egg sandwich. Um, and so all these products are going to become so available and uh, abundant that people will make these choices. Right. They don't have to eat it every day. Let them eat it a couple times. Yeah, so we keep challenging ourselves with newer products, right? And um, by 2050, there's going to be 9 billion people on the planet. We're not going to be able to feed them if our food supply remains the same. And so I think in the next couple of years, we will keep improving Just Egg because um, there are a lot of things we can do because it's not a, a product that's produced by nature. So we are thinking of adding iron to it because eggs traditionally don't have that much iron and there are parts of the world where people are very iron deficient. So could we put in iron fortification? Could we add a certain mix of vitamins that in certain parts of the world may be customized to that location? Those are some of the things that we have improvements for egg. In the cultured meat area, we're just starting, right? We have now a product that is like a chicken nugget that is made without harming any animals. We are now starting on a pork line, a beef line, um, a fish line. And most importantly, we are trying to bring high-end meats to everybody. And for that purpose, we've signed a partnership with a Japanese family named Toriyama, which makes one of the best Wagyu beef in the, in the world. It's $200 a kilogram. Very few people can afford it. And they can only make uh, 30 cattle a month. So we have agreed for them to give us some cells. And we are now producing uh, Wagyu as a cultured meat. And hopefully by the end of the year, you will have a Wagyu burger that you can go and buy.